Blog Talk Radio. Which is nice. Game one. Toronto. Get this. Toronto won another home game in game one. Can you believe it? Well, believe it. Of course, Golden State came back in that third quarter, really late second quarter, third quarter dagger. Put the game, I'm not going to say out of reach, (laughs) because that thing was well within reach down the stretch. And, of course, the man, Iguodala, just always shows up in the finals. I mean, don't get me wrong. He shows up throughout the whole playoffs. The guy's been showing up for the last five years, but especially, especially in the finals. So we're going to, you know, start the show with a quick segment of, of looking at game one and game two, some of the similarities, some of the differences. And then we're going to break down game three. And even, you know, talk a little game four action as well. 1-1, can Toronto steal one on the road? But there's more. Clay Thompson, hamstring injury in game two, near the end of game two. Didn't stop him from talking shit to Drake, though. That was pretty funny behind the scenes. Also, Kevin Durant, will he be back for game three or game four or ever? We've seen him on the court just dribbling a ball. Haven't seen a whole lot from him. So we we definitely will discuss all of this stuff in just a moment. And by the way, if this is your first time listening to the NBA Playoff Banter Podcast, it streams live right here on blogtalkradio.com forward slash rope-a-dope radio. Okay, it streams live. It archives. The NBA Playoff Banter Pod is part of the Rope Dope Radio Podcast, basketball, boxing, football, all that good stuff. However, you can also check it out, Rope Dope Radio, um, you know, on iTunes, on Stitcher, Spricker. We get a lot of listens from Player FM. A lot of people like to set up there. Same with TuneIn. We got a lot of listens from there over the years. We're also part of the Grueling Truth sports podcast network okay and they can be found on itunes and everywhere including spotify and iheart radio in fact use your siri or alexa and through you can you can tune right in well you can use tune in actually and you can uh you know just say search uh grueling truth sports podcast network on spotify and, and, and it'll get you there okay um and also while you're at it, head on over to thegruelingtruth.net. That's another place where you can listen to the podcast. But while you're at thegruelingtruth.net, you can read an article as well, whether it's basketball, football, baseball, boxing, anything. They also got a great sponsor over there, mybookie.ag. And um, they also have Bet DSI. Let me take that back. Let me run that back. Bet DSI. BetDSI.eu is actually the new sponsor. I didn't even mention. I didn't. I don't know what you're talking about. The other stuff. I, I'm not really sure about what we're talking about there. Okay, but the that you can actually make your deposit, receive 50% sports and 50% casino bonus. You can use the promo code TGT. 
the grueling truth. TGT, play now, bet DSI dot EU, just so you know. That's their new sponsor. I damn near messed it up right there. Actually, I mean, I did. I, 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 I can't lie. I did. By the way, if you're thinking about cutting the uh, the cord there or you have cut the cord, try Direct TV now. Okay, It's a seven-day free trial, no annual contracts. You're not stuck in anything. You can stream it anywhere, your smart TV, your smartphone, your tablet, your cloud DVR. Well, they have the cloud DVR. Plans start as low as $50 a month. HBO included for the plus and max deals. And for a limited time, we're talking limited time now, folks, for four months prepay, okay, four months prepay, you can check out, or, you know, if you do the prepay, you get a free Apple TV 4K fifth generation. Maybe you have a fourth generation. Maybe you have an old Roku. Here's the deal. It's regularly priced at 179 the Apple TV 4K fifth generation. So 200 bucks, you get four months of cable. There's a lot of different series. There's a lot of baseball on, local baseball, regional baseball. There's a ton of stuff going on in the summer. Of course, boxing fans. It's only $11 for Showtime. Check out DirecTV now, okay? I'm going to go ahead and bring in my co-host and check his temperature. He must have been, you know, a little like, mm, game one, it's just game one, no big deal. Game two, he must have kind of felt like that was a must win if you look at that 2-0 series lead percentage uh, stuff going on there. Just going to see where he's at as a longtime Golden State fan. And by the way, I can vouch for this, okay? I give him crap about the Minnesota Twins and, and other stuff, but he definitely was a Golden State fan before all this, you know, great run they've had in the last really not just five years last like seven eight years they've been really fun to watch and you can just see him building the thing anyway marshall what is going on buddy one one you got to be feeling good to uh you know steal a game on the road to get that one one but then again clay thompson hamstring you hear hamstring you think skilled player basketball players like a skilled player in football you know feet Hand, you know, the, the feet, the hands, and the legs, especially the hammy, not the best thing to hurt. What have you heard? What are you feeling? Man, this is getting a little bit of dramatics here. And, and these injuries in the finals are now starting to really mount up with this Golden State Club. Yeah, and it's 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 making it very interesting. Um it, it's kind of the theme, and it, it will probably be the theme for the rest of the series. Um, I mean, obviously with Clay, he, you know, like he said to Kerr yesterday, hey, I'm coach, I'm going to play, I'm good. And then Kerr's like, he would say that if the guy's half dead. So, I mean, obviously I, I don't think um, Clay is like a 0% chance. I, I mean, normally if you tear your hamstring really bad, it'd probably be like, dude, he's out for good. You know, but right, again, true. hamstrings. That, yeah, but with football, I mean, you, you see so many football guys hamstring tear out for three weeks. Like, and hamstrings are one of those things where if you reaggravate it, then he's done mm-hmm. for good. So, I mean, maybe let him rest game three and then play game four. You know, I, I don't know. I, I mean, obviously he's going to do all he can yeah. to get back out on the court, but without him, and if KD is not back yet. All of a sudden, Game Three gets a little more entertaining. I mean, I I I, I think if if by chance Clay and KD both come back Game Three, I'm thinking, okay, we're we're sitting pretty. But, <laughs> I, you know, but as of now, neither of those are a guarantee. And Looney, who's been our go-to big, is more than likely out. I've heard he has like a sprained collarbone. I've never heard that term until this afternoon on ESPN. But he's yeah, how not the hell feeling do you too. Sprain your collarbone. <laughs> I don't. I've that never was heard that, that either. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because I was going to ask you, like, so do you know what the hell a sprain collarbone is? Because I've probably no, sprained I, it a couple I, times. I'm not sure how that term applies, but I did hear it used medically, and uh, I believe that was the reply from on the show. It's like, well, what's a sprain collarbone? The guy's like, I'm not sure, but the collarbone didn't do him too well. well okay. Um, 
So all those answers are stuff that are going to have to be kind of impatiently waiting. Like, yeah. But um, from the game itself, because we can get back to injuries later, um, for game one, that is – and like you said, this has been a run. I, I started enjoying this run even when they got knocked out by the the, um, the the Clippers and the Spurs, like before they even got their really run going. So this has been a long run of, of success. But that, that, that game one is some of the best defense I, I've ever seen any team play against Curry and Clay and Draymond, all these guys. In game one, the Raptors' defense was phenomenal. It, it was one of the few games I've ever seen where the Warriors didn't go on a run. I mean, they, I think they had like one little seven or nine zero run, but it wasn't like those things where Clay hits a three, they make a steal, Steph hits three, and all of a sudden they call a timeout. It was a pretty quiet run. And to Toronto's credit, we've always talked about um, all year about how role players always play better at home. Their role players played out of their minds. Uh, I mean, we 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 yeah. know the game. It, we know that, and and that I'm not breaking huge news here, like. Role players do play better, but in game one, when Siakam dropped 32 and Gasol dropped 20. Van Fleet, it's, Van Fleet off the bench, too. It, yeah, when, when that dude dropped 15, you know, that alone right there is do, 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 67 points. It's like, well, holy Jesus. Are you teaching math now? <laughs> yeah. Wow, that was quick, dude. Uh, I, I, I got my stats pulled up and things I didn't butcher that, but – um, you know, from my perspective, I was a little bit upset because I was like, man, we, we looked pretty bad. And, and, as, and I remember the Warriors' losses just as good as I remember the wins. Normally the losses stick in your head for a little bit more. Um, but it was like, geez, you know, the, my main point when our finals preview show was, Chris, I don't think Kawhi can be the single-handedly, and I don't think he has the people to help him do it. So what are they going to do? And in game one, oh, the, those boys were ready to play. I mean, Danny Green couldn't hit any threes in that game seven last round. He was busting threes, and it was a, literally a collective team effort um, of perfection. And, I mean, when Siakam, sometimes people get hot. And the, it's not like Golden State was playing garbage defense. I mean, their transition was pretty sloppy at times. But, you know, in half court, they normally don't play too bad, but Siakam couldn't miss. And Kawhi was kind of had a, a minorly quiet 23, and he got to the foul line, so – after game one, I was like, well, damn, if, if their role players are going to play like that, we're going to have to get a little more creative offensively. So I guess, Chris, after game one, it was a little bit frustrating, and but also complimentary. I mean, you know, as sports fans, we can normally always bitch about if our team loses, but sometimes you've got to just say, hey, the team we just played put in a good effort. And, and again, go, the Torontos, they, they weren't missing big threes. The crowd was going nuts, and they were making Curry's life hell. Um, obviously, without having Durant on there um, and Clay not really being an off the dribble guy, you can kind of double Curry at half court, and they were doing that very effectively. So after game one, I, I, I tip my cap to Toronto because that, like I said, that's some of the best defense I've seen um, against this Warriors team for the talent we have. That, that their game one defensive game plan was phenomenal, Chris. Yeah, and just to you know, I was wrong about. Um who they were going to put on Curry, but you called it right there. Or not called it, but you said it from the game. Um, you know, they actually just decided to to just kind of at least try to get two guys on him and see if he can trap them early, sure. which uh, is pretty damn good. I mean, how many times – I mean, actually, you haven't been calling for it, but how many times have I said, hey, guys, when he crosses the half court – Mm -hmm. Somebody get on that kid because he's going to jack it. And at times, people just didn't – it just didn't click or something. He's like, dude, are you guys – okay, fine. And it's 34 feet, and it hits it, and you just don't think he's going to shoot. And you're like, why don't you think he's going to shoot, dude? The guy is a dagger. Like, come on. Like, so that – I didn't – you know, I think that maybe to have Leonard – the fact that they have to rely at least going into game – you know, seven games potentially, right? The sure. fact that they have to rely on Leonard so much offensively, probably throughout and have throughout, right? We got a lot of help. They got a lot of help in the first game. But, um, you know, you do have to save energy somewhat for offense. And especially that offense where he has the ball so much, you know what I mean? And he, he works so much to get, 
an open shot or a shot that is good for him. Sometimes they're not always open. They're kind of lean and fading, but that's his shot at times. Um, so I thought it was actually smart. Plus, they put him on – so you can always save him for Curry, right? You can always be like, all right, dude, instead of draining you, why don't we see how they do with Curry? And it's not like they – shut Curry down, he had 34 points, you know what I mean? So they were just containing him and make sure he didn't have nine threes or some shit like that. Um, but also, you know, on Draymond, who's really, we spoke about this, he's really come on in these po- in this postseason. Um, it obviously is just as important as any piece on this team in this five-year run, of course, but, you know, he had 10, 10, and 10. That's really great. That's solid. He was 2 and 9. You know, it is what it is. I thought he was challenged a lot more for those layups and didn't get as many easy buckets sure. as he has been. But he had six turnovers, too. You know what I mean? So when you have six turnovers, 10 assists is great. Triple double is great. But if six of them are turnovers, I think putting Leonard on him, because that is, in a weird way, he kind of, yes, yeah, Steph's the point guard, no doubt about it, but he does play a central role in the screen game, pick and roll, the elbow area, making the right pass to get somebody open, whatever it is. He, he's very essential in that offense, not just defense either. So I thought that was a, a pretty interesting move to just kind of hold off on that. Um and it, and it worked wonders. There were some moments that I did think, okay, here we go. You know, here comes go. Up, here they come. Here they come. And it, and it did feel like they were getting it to like five, and then they would go up. Then they got to like six, but they just couldn't quite get over the hump. And Toronto just had the answer with a big bucket. And I remember sitting there with my buddy after work watching the fourth quarter and you know, obviously a lot of America now are either really rooting with them and love them or they just want to see something else, right? That's just how sure. it goes. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, that that's that's fair. And mm-hmm. uh, so a lot of people are like, just get some buckets, dude. You know, this is about buckets now. <laughs> just get buckets. You got to keep matching them because we know that run is coming. We know that run is coming. And it never quite came and it closed it out pretty damn good. So kudos to Toronto. And you know that whole Jurassic Park and all that outside of the stadium? Or the arena, I should say? Yeah. I didn't realize that those things are all over the city and all over the outskirts, too. They actually have these viewing parties in a variety of places, and most of them are much bigger than what we see on TV. And I had no clue. And that really adds a level of like, wow, that's freaking cool for fans to do that. Did you know that? I didn't realize that. Um, And they explained it in one of these games, maybe the last game. And they're like, the stuff we're showing you is nice. It's great. It's phenomenal. But they have other ones that are actually bigger. And I was like, wow. Huh. So that's pretty cool. We've said that throughout the years now on this show for Toronto. Uh, But it just, you know, it's nice that they got a home win back-to-back series now. Um, or not back-to-back, I should say that, but uh, because, you know, they did play Milwaukee in the last round. But it's it just nice for to get so much support and then be like, hey, we won game one. You know what I mean? But on to game two, unless you got anything else from game one, sir. Uh, I'll just, for a little teaser for later, I will say that I believe after game one, uh, Draymond and Drake started talking a little crap, but uh, we'll, we'll get to what happened after game two. That, that's a little tease, as they would say. But yeah, right. A little trash talk after game one. Drake was around his mouth because his boys won. And, hey, right. fair is fair, I guess. On to game two, my friend, last night. And I, I got, like, 12 things to say, so I'll let you go first. <laughs> well, first of all, you know, I wish Diddy would hurt Drake again. You know, did, did, Diddy, old man diddy and hey i'm an old man too um he's he's we're we're in the same generation me and diddy i mean he's a little older but still we're in the same generation and when i say old man he's from harlem so i'm not 
challenging Diddy, okay? However, <laughs> I um, might be losing a co-host here in about a week or two. Yeah, if this, right. If exactly. This gets out. <laughs> I love. Did I ever tell you that we're sponsored by Bad Boy Records? No. Um, I. Uh, <laughs> Down goes but, Chris. Down goes Chris. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that whole zero to one hundred song, that was Diddy's beat, and, and Drake loved it so much. And Diddy hadn't released it, so he just released it on his CD and said, screw it. Became a big hit single. And then Diddy saw him in Miami and said, well, let's go talk about that hit single. Let's go outside. And next thing you know, it wasn't a strained or a sprained collarbone. He tore his collarbone out. Okay? This is a real-life story. And you know what it was? Diddy was getting on him so much that – his security guard, Drake, grabbed Drake away from getting his ass kicked more, and that's how he tore his his, his rotary guard, his, uh, his shoulder. That's how he that's how he did it. So he can sit there a tough. T- I know he's around some tough dudes, but um. Anyway, anyway, that's a little side. That we're we're talking Drake way too much. Um, but anyway, or I am, I should say. You had the perfect teaser. But anyway, game two. You know, Toronto showed up again, and they more than showed up. You know, they set that tone in the first quarter, and I'm looking at the score going, okay, dude, yeah, they're leveled with them. They got a little lead. They're leveled. They got a little lead. And next thing you know, I look up, and it's nine points. And I look up, and it's it's getting double digits. And I'm thinking, okay, that's not a big deal, but it's just a good sign for this series in general because, you know, I'm a fan, so that's what I'm thinking of. And I'm like, all right, dude. But then late second quarter, they started chopping that tree, Marshall. They started chopping that tree. And when I mean they, I mean the champs, Golden State, chop, 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 chopping away. And they got it really close at half. Coming out of that third quarter, the killer quarter, I mean, to start the quarter, Toronto, 0 6, 5 turnovers. Uh, Golden State, 14 0 run. And in the third quarter, 14 made field goals on, yep, you guessed it, 14 assists. Um, seven made field goals, seven turnovers in the third quarter for Toronto. I'm going to pass it to you, sir. I, I've, that, that, that game, I mean, I, I, was, I was about to jump ship. I, I was so frustrated because the. The, the, in the first half, you were seeing what happened game one. It was masterful defense. If not for Clay frickin' Thompson being maybe the best shooter ever, we don't even score maybe 10, 15 points in the first quarter. I mean, he, he was pulling up, hitting jump shots, uh, being double teamed, and, and he, he, he scored our first nine points of the game. He was only got to score for like the first six minutes. And I think then uh, – Iggy or Dre made a layup, and they went back to Clay hitting a shot. I mean, he was, like, legit our first 13 out of 15 points. No one else could get open. Um, Steph seemed in a funk. Then you hear that Steph Curry has the flu, and then you see McKinney get hurt, and I'm thinking, oh, my Lord, this is this is not off to a good start. Curry's 0 of 7. He can't make a bucket. Um, Clay got in a little bit of foul trouble. Boogie got in foul trouble. I restarted. So at halftime, I was like, I literally went outside my patio. I told my dad, I'm like, I need to go outside and relax. <laughs> so <laughs> poured myself a drink. I literally, I poured myself a, a, a Southern Comfort and Coke. I'm like, all right. I was like, I've been outside before with this team. You know, I, 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 like I said, I remember the losses sometimes more than the wins. But I was like, all right. And even my dad's like, dude, they're, you know, they're, they're only down five points at half, you know, I'm like, yeah, but it just has so many flashbacks of game one and we don't have a flow to our offense. And then in the third quarter, and I'm sure Kerr gave a nice little, uh, beautifully toned speech at half. Um, yeah. they came out. I'm sure he and, threw his and, back out yelling at him. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and they came out and they took that little momentum they'd had at the end of the second quarter. And, and it, it, it was flashback dubs. It was, the the veteran guys along with Boogie and they went on I believe a combined it was a 20 to 0 run a 18 or 20 to 0 run and Toronto couldn't score a bucket for I believe the first five and a half to six minutes of the third quarter and you're like uh oh and, and I, I mean I'm going crazy I'm like all right I, I, I should have listened to my dad I knew they'd get this to get you know it's one of those things like okay you're 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 going through all your emotions as a sports fan on the couch and 
and from that point on, it pre- I mean, it got close, but th- that was kind of like there was kind of remembrance of okay, like this team when when we're clicking, we can click. And I'm going to talk about a couple of guys. I'll throw it back to you because we'll kind of go to the end of it. But I mean, there's some people that just we were surprised last night. Now, personally, I think the Boogie Cousins love of the of the game he had is a little bit over the top. I only say that, Chris, because it, it, I know the guy's been hurt, but. It's like people forgot that in Sacramento, this guy was literally scoring sometimes 20 to 40 points a game, carrying a team for about six, seven years where they sucked. And he would do it pretty much all on his own. Now so he's had Kevin his tam- Love. I'm sorry. I'm yeah. sorry. Now, you know, and he's had his temperament issues, and he's always had different coaches, and he's maybe not been the best teammate ever. I've always been a fan of the guy, though. But people are like, whoa, look at the game Boogie Cousins had last night. Oh, my God. It's like the dude's – pretty damn good and for a big he can dribble and he kind of helped solidify the team there in the first and second half and even with defense in the in uh just throughout the whole game so boogie cousins played phenomenal and he kind of just uh, he was kind of the centerpiece because with uh looney out he was their go-to big and then that guy like bogut comes off the bench and gets like six points on like lob passes so it's kind of like the guys you didn't quite expect to help out in the series who came in to be nice pieces and even quinn cook hit a couple threes in a row. So I've given the bench a lot of crap this game, and they played awful in game one. And in the second quarter, the bench played awful again too. But Cousins and um, Quinn Cook and uh, Bogut really kind of were that extra glue piece because Curry was getting hounded again like usual, and, and Clay was obviously pulling up his leg a little bit stretched. So it was nice to see those guys kind of step up. And I, I don't know. I, I I guess I had to get that all the way, Chris, just because I was surprised how people were like, man, that Demarcus Cousins, he he played so many minutes, and and after the game, he's like, dude, I was happy to be in the finals. You think I'm gonna waste this opportunity? <laughs> you know, it's like, come on, man. I I know the guy's been hurt and he hasn't played much, but this dude was an All Star, went healthy, and you think a guy like that who's never been in the finals is gonna like give a half ass effort? I I think maybe I'm uh, too big of a fan of him, but. Uh, he he really kind of helped that team go last night with injuries they've been suffering. Yeah, and by the way, 404, I'm going to get to you in just a moment. Hang on just a moment. We're, we want to get your take on all this stuff that we're talking. So it'll be just a second there, sir, or ma'am, whoever it is. I, I shouldn't have said it like that. But anyway, um, I think he was a big key because I think it's – I mean, look at – Gasol the very next you know the very next I mean now you had yeah Ibaka had some rebounds off the bench but they combined for 14 points or not even 13 points I don't have a great math mind like you, yourself but <laughs> <Yeah>. um <laughs> but uh I think he did make a big difference that way you know he spread the ball a little bit but the, the, the bigs like you said Gasol had a great game in the combination, we talked about this going in the series of Gasol and, and, and Ibaka and how they have to be centers that make a difference. Remember Trish Thompson, down 2-1 to one, Golden State, right? And it should be the yes. Cavs up 2-1. to one. At that time, those three games, it was like, wow, Trish is – dude, he's really making a difference. And then really ever since that point, it's been all downhill for him, really, if we're honest. Uh, sure. Well, no, no, no. Kardashian curse. No, but that was the next year after, two years after that. Because remember, they, they won the final. Well, I know you know that, but um, <laughs> um, because, but you know what I'm saying. Like, sure. You to be able to have a center and actually then do something so they don't go to that freaking killer lineup really, really helps. Um, but maybe they don't have to go to the killer lineup when they got that dude in there doing what he does. So I, I hear what you're saying, but I think it's been so long since we've seen it. And the guy, you know, almost had a triple-double. And so look at the bigs. Look at Green and Cousins, 17 and 11. They both – nine assists, six, six assists. Both had ten rebounds. I mean, that is freaking impressive, man. That is impressive. And I, and I thought their overall defense was on point um, in the second half. And really, that last little part to cut it to what was it five at? You said a five at the half, right? Mm-hmm. You know it. It was uh, it was just like they turned it up. The offense is flowing, and obviously, when you have that many assists, and 
And real quick, 404, literally, I just want to do the stat, then we're going to go to you. Um, here it is. Every Warriors basket since halftime had been assisted on. Or, or Yeah, 33 assists on 37 field goals for the game. Wow. Just in general. And every basket after halftime. Like, that that's unheard of, isn't it? I mean, I, I don't know too many. You know, I, I'd have to look <laughs> into that one because that that's impressive. Dude. That is really well, impressive. And, and, and I don't know the details, ahead, Chris, but I'm pretty go sure. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, that's fine. We okay. can talk about that later. Go to the caller. All right. All right, 404, you're live on the NBA Playoff Podcast. What is going on, buddy? Uh, not much, man. How y'all doing? Good. Yeah, good, man. I, I guess first things first, man. When the season started, everybody told us we know the result, so there's no need to watch. The NBA is getting boring. Well, the reality of it is that never plays out that way, man. No matter who the favorite is, there's going to be some times uh, where things look dim. So it's not as simple as people tried to make it before the season. Now, I got a problem with Golden State fans trying to make themselves the plucky underdogs. No, y'all the evil (laughs) empire. Like, calm down. (laughs) Um, But every team trying to three-peat or or become a dynasty – their biggest obstacle is injuries because when you play in the NBA from June until June consecutive seasons, you just start mm-hmm. to fall apart. You start to get sure. picked up. Some guys will never be the same. Uh, if y'all remember Scottie Pippen uh, pre second three peak, Scottie Pippen after, like this, that's just how it goes because you're pl- putting so many you know minutes on your body. But you know they're, they're, Rodman they're maintaining. Too. You got Rodman too. Right. He wasn't the same after that. That's a good call. Right, right. And, but you guys, like, guys are coming back. You got Cousins playing through what he's playing through. Uh, Clay's going to have to, you know, kind of tough it out for the rest of the series with the hamstring. And, and that's what makes it difficult. The difficult is not necessarily the opponent in front of you because I don't think Toronto's anywhere near as good as Golden State. But you add that big burden of minutes on there, and now you're talking about a series. All that said, I'm still scared as hell of these guys. I'm not betting against them. I figure they're going to find some kind of way to win, whether we see a Livingston, Cook, Iggy lineup or something. Like, who knows? Somehow they're going to win, and it's really discouraging. But I'm glad that this might be the last year, man. I'm, I'm so glad. I know you're a Golden State fan co-host, but, but dude, come on, man. We I, I, hey, I'm with you. I'm with <laughs> that, that, you. I'm with you, 404. <laughs> I'm, I'm right there with you. I'm lined up with you in a line. We got our tickets. For the next year, I can't <laughs> wait for it. But I am happy. You made a good point about the beginning of this year because all this LeBron's here, this over here, this over there, and then they got Boogie, and everyone's like, really, dude, they got Boogie? What the fuck? You know, in that, in that <laughs> mood. But you know what we've gotten? We've gotten better ball, really, because teams are, are, are building that way, and we've gotten these performances, Giannis. We've gotten hard and hardened the last couple of years has brought he, I mean, I've dogged Harden over the years all day long on defense. You know, his Ole, come on through, drive through, which lane do you want? You know, that type of defense. But once they put the ball in his hands the last couple of years, I've had to really give him a lot of credit. But it's still a good, like a great brand of basketball, especially if you watch the best versus best teams. Um, what are your thoughts about Drake on the sidelines, dude? Uh, well, I'll I, I just put it like this. It, it, it doesn't appear as authentic as, like, the Spike Lee moments. Like, sometimes exactly. I feel like he's forcing it. But I, I get where he's coming from. He's a fan. He's the ambassador. Uh, he's trying to do the thing. It's, overall, it's good for the game. But he does have to know where the line is. Like, he, he's going a little bit too far sometimes. And it's it's not a thing of, like, him being a tough guy. It's a thing of him being a corny guy. And, you know, that's part of the, the appeal of Drake. Like, he's, like, the most yep. normal, weird, awkward superstar we've ever seen. <laughs> so, I mean, it is I think it is. Diddy. I think he, I think Diddy needs to talk to him again. You know what I'm saying? I think Diddy needs to put his hands <laughs> on him again. Just a couple times. You know what I mean? Just to humble him I up a little bit. I don't know if bit. that'll help, man. It, it, it's just sometimes. All that's right, I'll, I'll just put it like this. If you're if you were a top recording star and you were you know number one in the world, the number one athlete in the world when y'all meet up, that person will be looking up to you. Drake is the weird instance where he looks up to them, whether it's 
a Hall of Famer or just like yeah. a regular NBA player. You'll see him hanging out just like Drake's his little homie. So, I mean, that's just I true, know, man. That's and a he's a bandwagon. It, he's a crazy yeah. bandwagon, too. Dude. <laughs> I mean, that curse oh, is he, real. You seen that he Anthony Joshua? Uh, the fighter. Right, yeah, right. Anthony Joshua, say. dude. It said, he, he just <laughs> tweeted like a couple days before the fight <laughs> that the curse is over. No, this is the biggest upset of the curse, actually, by a mile. <laughs> And I know you guys are boxing guys, so, so I mean, what what do you think? Do you think Joshua uh, had him and just got a little sloppy and got caught, and then from then on it was over, and the rematch he's going to blow him out, or do you think this guy's legit? Well, one, this dude's legit, but he did get a little sloppy going for that. He wanted to match Wilder's highlight reel knockout from a couple of weeks ago, so I do think he got sloppy, but, you know, it wasn't just – it wasn't like Lennox Lewis got caught with one punch and he laid out. You know what I mean? He got beat up all around the ring. And remember, he won the fifth round. So he had recouped yeah. to an extent. Now, I'm not going to say he was all the way back. Cause I don't think he ever was. But they could have stopped that fight at the end of the third round, though. Am I right? I mean, I, he wasn't I agree. moving forward. I agree. It's like, dude, come yeah, to he, me. And he, he's trying to adjust <laughs> his, his shorts. And he's like, dude, don't worry about your trunks. Go to the ref, dude. What are you doing? You know what I mean? Right. He was a little loopy, but, I mean, ultimately, no matter what, man, that dude was gassed by the end. He had took a beating, yep. and he didn't want any more. I don't care what he says, but he didn't want any more. All those muscles, much. man. All those muscles. You need oxygen. You need oxygen for those <laughs> muscles, dude. I've been trying to tell people, right. a lot of us uh, old old heads with boxing, been trying to tell people, like, dude, usually boxers kind of have that swimmer thing. Where they got big ass shoulders, they got a fourteen pack for a stomach, but their their chest and everything else is not huge usually. You know what I mean? Their back is right. big or something like that from throwing. You know, but yeah, dude, it, that was pretty crazy, man. Any anything else, sir? No, that's it, man. I guess I'm gonna hang back. How, how do you see game man, three yeah, and game four going? How, how do you see game three and game four real quick? Well, I'm not the most. Uh, positive person to ask that, but I think Golden State beats the <laughs> hell out of them and the series is over. But that's just me. <laughs> well, hey, let, are you, let hey, me ask you one uh, question. Yeah. You are positive about that. You, you you were honest with that. But I appreciate well, you yeah. calling in. Go ahead, uh, Marshall. You got a question for yeah. me? Yeah, and, and, and I'm, and I'm going to defend Kawhi because I am a Golden State guy, but this morning on one of those talk shows, they, one of those guys, I don't need to say his name because he drives me nuts, but he was ripping Kawhi saying down the stretch last night, Kawhi Leonard couldn't get it done. And in my opinion, Draymond Green locked him up and played phenomenal defense. And my other part I'm going to ask you is, who, who do you think can help him? Like, if Kawhi is getting ripped for choking down the stretch, which I think is pretty stupid, I mean, does, does Van Fleet, is he really the next go-to option? Because Kyle Lowry's been trash, and Ibaka doesn't come off the bench. If, you know, you're pulling for Toronto, who who the hell would you pick to be his second man? Because the guy needs some help. Who do you think could maybe help Kawhi win a couple of games for the Raptors this series? But I think it has to be a combination. I think Siakam has to play better. Uh, you have to get one of those show-up games from Kyle Lowry, which you never know when it's going to happen. Yeah. Sure. Van, Fleet should, if Van Fleet just needs to keep doing what he's doing. This is the best he's played, and that's really all you can expect from him. Like, you can't expect more than what he gave you uh, the other night, man. But as far as the, the sports shows, hey, man, everybody needs content now. So these 24-hour takes that expire after 24 hours and don't mean anything, True. like th- this is kind of what we do now, man, hot take content. But you, you just got to take it for what it is, man. We, we've got a home loss, so we got a series. But nobody honestly knows where we go, or otherwise we'd all live in Vegas. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> True. Touche, yeah. touche. All good, man. Y'all have a good one, though. Thank you. you too. Thanks a lot for calling, man. Yep. All right, four oh four, appreciate it. Let's hope we uh let's hope this uh series extends for us fans in general. And speaking of um first of all, you can uh if you remember what you were about to say, hit that up. You can add more to game two. But we're gonna get to game three and game four. Um, that's right around the corner. Wednesday is game three. Anything else, though, because uh, you, you were going to say something. Oh, yeah, I, I think that assist stat is even more impressive, and I don't know the exact wording, Chris, but I believe 
once you catch a pass from a teammate, if you take like more than two dribbles, I'm pretty sure the assist goes away. I, again, it's kind of a technicality. Yeah, it's but one it's like, dribble. It's one okay, dribble. Yeah. Yep. So it, it makes well, that in, even in more. In the NBA, pre- who the hell knows? But yeah, it's supposed in theory on paper. Uh, you're not supposed to travel either. Yeah, true. But, I, I mean, so that that makes that even more impressive. But they were having all those backdoor cuts, and, and that is kind of a bitch for Toronto because, you know, there's been moments where you, see, keep, you, you keep seeing all these Golden State players having wide-open layups. Well, Toronto has actually done a pretty excellent job of covering Clay and Curry to get open threes, but when you double the guards and a guy like Draymond or McKinney slips down low, that's an easy layup. Now, I get you can't cover everything. That's kind of a, a coaching decision there. But, yeah, they, they've, they've been working that pretty well. But to get near the end of the game, after, like I said, they had a bunch of role guys do as much as they could with the injuries we had, I, I just love the very end of, of it being a two-point game and Iguodala, I know you didn't love that part, dude. I know you did oh, not like it when they cut it to two. Oh, with, no. What, 20 seconds left. I was pretty surprised that happened. I, yeah, the, the the staff throwing the ball up in the air was stupid. They got some technical. Kawhi makes free throws. I mean, you know, next thing you know, you're like, oh, my God. And, and again, I, I'm not lying to you, Chris. When when I saw Iguodala get ready to shoot, that's like the one guy that the dude doesn't get nervous. Is, is yeah. he as good of a three-point shooter as Clay and Curry? No, he, he's worse than Kawhi and, and Van Fleet, whoever, percentage-wise. But that, that dude is just – he's always been rock-solid clutch. He won a freaking MVP finals award when he was like a 75-1 to underdog in the award from Vegas, and he didn't even start a game because he shut down LeBron. I mean, the, the guy just doesn't get nervous. And, and he he could have ate a sandwich out there, too. I, he was wide I open, dude. Literally, Toronto was like, "Oh, dude, Iggy's gonna shoot." And once I saw that ball leave, I'm like, "Dude, that's money." Because he normally hits two or three a game, normally, or yeah. in the clutch games, and he busts right when they it. need it. And then after the game, there, Nick Nurse, you know, I guess Curry said it was a little disrespectful they didn't cover him, and I don't think that was the, I don't think the Raptors were trying not to cover him, but Nick Nurse was like, "Yeah, ha ha ha," you know, it, I'd like to see that play happen ten more times. If if he's gonna shoot the ball, we're okay with that result. It's like, dude, I wouldn't be laughing because you, nah. if you want to mock a guy that's a gamer, that's clutch as hell, and he hit the shot on you to beat you on your home court, that, that's not something to joke about. If you give that shot to you at all ten times, he's probably going to hit six or seven because he's, he just makes those big damn plays, and I was happy for that. So he stepped it up again. It did get a little close. And I mean, the Warriors, they didn't score for five minutes, the last five minutes of the game up until that shot, but they got it done with the, with the defense. And again, a bunch of kind of kind of a weird lineup. If you would have told me that I would see Quinn Cook and Bogut right. and Livingston on the court in the fourth quarter, I'd be like, Chris, what happened to the team? But I could have sworn I saw Kerr in there. <laughs> so I swear hey, to God, they, Kerr was in there. They, they, they got the job done though, and that's all that matters. And uh, yeah, so as you said, we're we're uh, unless you want to um, throw any more, then I guess we're looking forward to the future. Yes, and is that future, does that future consist of one, Kevin Durant, who as of right now is still out. I saw him dribbling on a court. Uh, I guess that's pretty good. He, he's walking. Um, he didn't, he wasn't shooting though. Uh, but yeah, the, as of right now, you, you know, it's, it's Looney's day to day. He's got some injury we've never heard of. Clay Thompson's day to day. Clay Thompson's day to day, which is better than out for game three, knowing it right now. And like you said, if he would have really, really tore that hammy, I doubt he would. He would have been in that locker room. I doubt sure. he would have been even on. You know what I mean? With that, he just had it right, wrapped up in ice. But you could tell. You know, I think he hurt. Well, he hurt it right. And then in the yeah. post, in the post, he was trying to go for position, and he actually got fouled. Remember when he was limping back? He's like, "Dude, I got fouled. What was that?" But I think that's where he hurt it even worse. It seemed like because he hurt it when he took that three. And then he, he like, banged it up really bad because I think some of the weight shifted on him. And I, it looked like he may have torn it even worse to where then all of a sudden he couldn't, you know, he was gimpy then. Um, sure. He was pretty pissed off walking out of there. And that was pretty funny to see him talking trash to Drake <laughs> behind, uh, behind, you know, behind the scenes and whatnot. But, uh, I mean, have you heard as a fan? you know, scouring the forums and internet and all this stuff that you're probably doing. 
have you heard anything about Kevin Durant as far as game three? I, I, I've i heard nothing, um, my, nah, and this is not confirmed, but my buddy who scours information better than me, his gut and what he's minorly heard is, he, is that he thinks Durant plays. And I, get way, I think he's been close. I, he thinks Durant's going to play. I hope he does play game three because – I don't think Kurt. I don't think Clay plays Game Three at all. I I heard you know I've heard again talking about the top people on on ESPN today. Someone suggested, hey, maybe let Clay sit out Game Three. I actually love that idea. I mean, if we lose Game Three, is the series if over? Coming back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if Durant if Durant plays Game Three, let Clay rest. I mean, if we lose Game Three, is it over? No, but you know, again, the hamstrings. You've seen that happen so many times in baseball and football where. Or even playing high school sports with your buddies. Like, oh, dude, I pulled my hammy. And then you go back out there again, and it feels good. And all of a sudden you make that move, and it's like, oh, crap, I just tore it again. You know? So, I, I don't know. My my gut says that I don't think Clay plays. I don't think he should. My buddies believe in that Durant's going to play, but that's just kind of just a gut. Maybe you have some internet stuff. There's there's no truth to that. I do think Durant will play. If he doesn't play three, I think he plays four. I mean, I, I think he's got to become there. There's kind of that athlete motivation, too, especially let's say they lose three and Clay is still hurt. It's kind of that suck it up, like, dude, we got to go. I know you're not healthy, Durant, but shit, Kurt Curry played with the flu last night and, and scored points for us. So it's kind of that, you know, I know you're beat up, but like our caller 404 said, injuries happen. E- everyone's dinged up somehow. So, I, and I don't like saying this, Chris, but, I mean, if Toronto plays a defense like they've been and we don't have Durant or Clay. The, I think game three is the, it's the, then we're then we're then Boogie's gonna have to do his thing again. Then then shit gets really interesting. I I, I don't think we're looking at a, a six point favorite as Vegas has it. I mean what I mean I think if Durant and Clay are both out, I think we're back to like a one or two point kind of pick 'em game for game three, wouldn't you? I kind of lost you there. The last could you just repeat like the oh. last two sentences or something? Sure. I, I was saying that, you know, as of now, the Warriors are a six-point favorite, which is fair. But I think if Durant and Clay are both out, I think we're back to like a one- to two-point kind of pick em game because y- you, you can't really replace what Clay does defensively. And, and in a way, I guess if Clay is out, you have to have Draymond kind of do what he does. And all of a sudden, you run out of more and more options to score and defend and people take and rest. I think if, yeah, if Durant and Clay don't play – Game three is probably a, a, a one to two point spread or a pick 'em game, and Toronto's got to be feeling confident at least going into that matchup. Because if you're a Raptors fan, which I haven't really given that perspective, they're thinking they let that game slide last night. So if you see those guys are out, you got to feel, hey, game three, boys, I don't care if we're a Golden State, we have a chance to win this thing. Yeah, I agree. I mean, even if they just only have one of them back, I. This is this series is sure there might be a blow on in here. There might be a Golden State just goes off for sure. You know, twenty three threes and Steph hits eleven of them or something like that. You know, I mean, he'll break some sort of record or whatever. You know, it happens with Steph. But um, yeah, I definitely think that. And in fact, the the fact that there's like some wishy washy stuff. I think the spread should be a little tighter, to be honest with you. You know what I mean? Right now, because there's just a lot of I don't knows. You know what I mean? I understand the 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 you know the point spread is gonna go to them because of the home court, but yeah, I don't. As of right now, I, I that seems kind of high. But yeah, I mean this is this is I could definitely see this thing too too. Um, you know, going back to Game Five. Well, and, and just to kind of play the what-if game, which I know it's hard to do, but let, let's let say that Clay's out and, and McKinney's out. Now, all of a sudden, I mean, you got Agudala and Steph and Boogie starting and Draymond starting, and then you're, okay, I mean, who are you going to start? Uh, I mean, you can't start Boogie if you're starting Boogie. I guess then you have, like, Livingston or Quinn Cook, and that's your starting five. And, and now, if you're Toronto, Chris, you, you'd be feasting because now you can yeah. basically say, hey, we're not going to let Curry shoot. Okay. Uh, if you're going state and they keep trapping Curry, can can Draymond and Agudala win you a game from their offensive skills? Probably not. And like I just said, Agudala is one of the most clutchest guys I've ever seen. But 
he is not going to beat you off the dribble. He normally gets to shoot wide open threes because Clay and Curry are being guarded, and teams kind of don't, you know, teams right. want to say, "Hey, Iggy, you beat us." But if Clay is out and Durant's not back, all of a sudden our offense is going to be a Curry show, and Toronto has proven that they can actually do stop that about as effectively as possible. If you take Clay out the game, Chris, all of a sudden it's Stephen Curry. He ain't gonna he ain't gonna be able to get a shot off. Maybe, as you said, maybe they do put Kawhi on him or let Van Fleet and Kawhi kind of cover him the whole game, make his life hell. And now you're going to have to see the Boogie Cousins from Sacramento come back pretty quickly or all of a sudden we're going to be tr- struggling to score. Because up until the 20-0 run, those first six quarters of the series was pretty damn good defense by Toronto. And we only made one bucket the last five minutes of the game last night. So I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, obviously I believe in the team, and I'm optimistic. But with the injury bug, uh, all of a sudden, I don't. We're, we're not going to score 109 points if Clay and Durant are out. We're going to have to play some incredible defense, use the home court. But if yeah, again, if I'm Toronto, man, I, I'm I'm praying for the injury gods. Okay, let those guys take a day off, and we we have a great chance at that, Chris. Now, I think if one of them or two of them play, I think all of a sudden we got the momentum again. But yeah, the injury right. bug and and you know with how these things go nowadays, that's probably going to be close to a game time decision. You know they they said yeah, they, yeah. Uh, yeah you know they said that Clay was going to get an MRI today and I'm sure he has but I'm sure that's not something they're going to leak out now I think if you happen to see the line change in Vegas I mean obviously uh, you know that's going to affect it or if Durant will come back but to kind of wrap up this injury talk that kind of goes to your point I'm a little surprised there is a spread right now of six because if you're an NBA better and you hear anything or in your gut it's telling you that Durant and Clay aren't going to play you should be loading up the house on Toronto right now again now could could Curry do something crazy sure but again I don't think Curry's going to go off if Clay's not playing I I would love to bet Toronto if you don't think those guys are going to play because you're getting an incredible bet Chris with a six-point favorite um yeah that that'd be a phenomenal bet I I would definitely look at Toronto if you think those injuries are going to hurt Golden State for game three I agree, and, you know, Curry could still go off, but if there are three-point shots that you're forcing them to take that are covered up, you know, the percentages go down. You know, it's just a plain simple, you know what I mean? Even if you're shooting, I mean, 43 or 42% is great from the three. You know, anything over 40 is awesome, but 40% from the field over, you know what I mean? If you look at it, there's easier buckets than that, and you can get streaky both ways with that. And, yeah, I agree. I mean, I definitely think it's high, and I, you know, it's not like they're going to be better defensively without Clay. You know what I mean? It'd be different if he was an offensive player, you know what I mean, whereas he was just a scorer. But he's such a stud defensive player, too, that it's really hurting them both sides. What are you going to say? I I literally, I just wanted to add the exclamation point on to you. That would be a retweet for me about – how he he's he's one of the best defenders in the league. He, he and yeah. so yeah, they, you're again. Draymond's great too. Like Draymond shut down Kawhi at the end of the game last night, but that mm-hmm. was for like four minutes. Like you know, right. uh, and, you know, you, you can't. You, if if Draymond has to guard Kawhi the whole game, all of a sudden you know there goes his uh, necessarily his, his drive on offense. Yeah, I I don't know, man. I'm with you. They're probably going to tease us. We probably won't know until probably Wednesday afternoon. Or again, if you hear some news out of Vegas, but yeah, I, my confidence level would go a lot further down if uh, if those guys are out. And what, what's your gut say on Durant? I mean, I, it, it is kind of weird how quiet everything has been, which makes you think yeah. he's not going to play because you, you think you'd hear some rumblings. But do you, do you think any chance Durant plays in three or four? You know, my gut is saying yeah. I mean, I think that there's. Either way, they could be stringing along just to add him in the tape, you know, review for the game plan, sure. of course. Sure. Uh, but I actually do think the fact that it's so quiet, the fact that he's had to have some private time to shoot when there's nobody in the damn building. You know what I mean? Like, I yeah. actually think he's – I and, you know, we, we've had a couple games now where it'd be like – well, we think he. Oh, we think he's coming. Oh, we think he's coming back. And and as he had a setback, I haven't heard of a setback. No, have no, you? I haven't yeah. heard of one at all. So I kind of feel like he's. I do feel like I wouldn't be surprised at all if he played game three, 
But just with the gaps in games, yeah, I think he'll – I actually do think he'll play a home game, and I don't mean game six. I think he'll be back either three or four. Um, Clay may be back, but with the hamstring injury, you just don't know what Clay you're going to get. Yeah, and, and that's the scary part. Like I, we, I, We've said it enough, but that that's just – I mean – I, okay, I'll say this. I think if he plays Chris, he won't be a hundred percent. You know that. Right. As, as we we might have the best training staff on the NBA in the world, but that's something that you can't naturally heal immediately just because it doesn't work like that. I mean, to think when guys do it in football and they miss a couple of weeks, I mean, they're, we're we're talking about the same right. kind of athletes. They're really not much different. I know the sports different, but still. Clay might be able to Especially play. Especially like wide receivers. You're right. Yeah. It, it's just, it's, it's, it's something where, again, a minor, so, and, and maybe to tie these together, maybe Clay missing game three, which I kind of think he does, would push the hand for Durant to play. Kind of like, yeah. dude, I can't make yep. it, so you need to come back. And maybe, like you said, it's five, you're laying it. But, yeah, if I was Vegas, man, I'm with you. I would be, uh, I'd be holding that spread off the board. Because I've seen NFL bets where, you know, Aaron Rodgers might not play this week or Cam Newton's might be out, and all of a sudden the, the spread's like, mm, we're not going to let you bet. So right. if you're a Toronto backer, get on that. Um, so I guess for, for my serious prediction, it kind of gets hard from this point on. I, I do think if we're minorly healthy, we'll win. I think if we, honestly, if, if, if game three doesn't have Durant or Clay, I, I would probably bet Toronto. I'd feel pretty good. You know, we we talked about who the best people on the court are. If you take out those guys, all of a sudden we got, you know, Dre and Iggy. And, I mean, all of a sudden Toronto's, you know, probably the better defensive team and can probably match us offensively. Um, I guess, Chris, maybe throw it to Toronto as we kind of wrap this thing up. Again, I asked our caller and asked you kind of, you know, do you is there another level of Kawhi we can see? I mean, I know what LeBron did against the Warriors was special. But he's LeBron. I mean, I like Kawhi is awesome, but he ain't LeBron. Like, is there another level right. of skill we can see from Kawhi? The dude's playing almost 40 minutes a game. He's going to the free throw line. He's playing great defense. He's not making stupid mistakes. He's a, shooting about 90% from the three uh, free throw line. He doesn't miss many threes. I, I, I'm sure as a Raptors fan, you want your guy to carry you. But, shit, Kyle Lowry could help the guy out a little bit. I mean, I don't know how much of a higher level <laughs> Kawhi can go. He, he He's had a pretty good playoffs. He's maybe missing a few shots. But, man, the the ceiling on him is, is growing really freaking high. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll put it this way. First of all, Lowry, dude, come on, dude. Like, come on, man. Like, what the hell's wrong with you, dude? Uh, but, anyway, um, in this series, I think he can go up a level. What he's given us so far, I think he can give us what he gave us in the last two series. So in this in this category, because, you know, he was pretty quiet until probably the late third quarter and fourth quarter in game one, right? It was really Sayakam, and then, and then he kind of closed with him. And then all sure. of a sudden he had 20 points. You're like, wow, he got 20 points. I remember when he was sitting at seven, you know what I mean? So that was that was key. And that was big in something, you know, with the dream on and all that. It did – he did seem a little bothered. We know he's a little ba- – well, he's banged up. But he did seem a little bothered down the stretch. I did see a couple of clips on uh, Twitter of uh, several different defensive possessions. And that was a little like, huh. But, you know, they get a break. They get a, they get a couple of days. So I think he cannot put it up to the notch he had it going on for the last chunk of that series. So to answer your question overall in the playoffs, no, I don't think he's got another level, but I do think he can put up a notch to match what he was doing in the series before, if that answers your question. Sure. And and, and I guess I'm just going to wing this. You can do it too. Again, we can't predict the injuries, but if you had to predict the series from what we've seen, I'm going to go with, I'm going 2-2, uh, game five, going going back to Toronto. I got a 2-2. Okay, okay. I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go the same, and I think the Warriors will, you know, hopefully probably get done at home in six. But, yeah, again, the injuries were so so hard to predict. Two and two, I, I'm with you. I, if, if the injury bug is clean, though, 
and by chance you get Durant and Clay back, all of a sudden it's like, uh oh, and then, then the boys are going to start cooking again. So we'll see again. It, you know, just l- pay attention to Twitter. The news is going to come out eventually. It's probably going to, it, it maybe won't even be tomorrow, but eventually it's going to say, hey, uh, by the way, these boys are playing or they're not playing. So any, uh, uh, any any other last takes, Chris, or comments, or any, anything else? No, sir. In fact, the uh, blog talk woman just said 10 seconds left, so this is a perfect way to shut this puppy down. Go Warriors. The boys are out. Have a good night. Peace. <laughs>